CIET and CERT presents the series of English stories. Learning to listen and listening to learn. Friends, let's listen to this program and enjoy. Have you heard of the northern and southern extremes of the earth known as the North Pole and the South Pole? Who do you think lives there? Why are these regions so cold? Listen to the story of the Poles now. The Poles On the northern and southern extremes of the earth are the Poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. The North Pole is called the Arctic and the South Pole is known as the Antarctic. The Arctic is a hollow at the top of the globe and the Antarctic a corresponding bulge at the bottom. It is as if an immense dent caused by the pressure of some cosmic thumb has been made at the North Pole, its effect passing through the earth to come out as a swelling at the South Pole. The dent on the top of the world is the Arctic Ocean, the world's smallest ocean. The bulge at the bottom is the continent of Antarctica. The Arctic and the Antarctic are truly contrasted. The Arctic Ocean is about 55 lakh square miles in area. The Antarctic continent is about 51 lakh square miles. The average depth of the Arctic Ocean, 4,200 feet, is equaled by the Antarctic's mean elevation of 6,000 feet, which makes it the highest of all the continents. Even the maximum depth of the Arctic Ocean, 17,500 feet, has its exact opposite in the Antarctic's highest mountain, which is 19,000 feet above sea level. They are so similar in shape that one can be superimposed on the other. The Arctic and the Antarctic, then, are the proverbial opposites, poles apart, as we say. But before looking at their differences, let us note what they have in common. Both have a net loss of heat from the sun. In both the regions, light plays amazing tricks. Here you can see the noon darkness and the midnight sun. This happens because of the inclination of the earth on its axis. In the polar skies, you can also see mock suns and double and triple mock moons. Mock suns and mock moons are created by millions of prismatic ice crystals in the sky. Above all, the polar skies are the only stage for the show of light by the northern and southern lights known as aurora borealis and aurora australis. Polar auroras appear in the form of bright colored arcs, bands, patches and most often as waving curtains. An aurora is caused by charged particles from the sun striking the rarefied gases of the ionosphere and lighting them. In other words, the lights are made by electrical storms 50 to 600 miles up, in much the same way that neon light is made in a tube. There is no sound corresponding this high lightning. The Antarctic has much more ice than the Arctic, eight times more. This is because the Antarctic is a continent. It has very little heat storing capacity. 
the Arctic is primarily an ocean. It has a capacity to store summer heat, which it uses later on to moderate the cold of winter. The whole of the Antarctic is covered by an ice sheet with an average thickness of more than a mile. The Arctic does not have that much of ice. Only Greenland and the high Arctic are covered with ice today. This ice on the poles flows out in the form of glaciers towards the sea. All ice tends to flow and find its level in the same way as water does. This outward flow of ice to the sea forms barrier ice in the Antarctic. Ice forms itself into big blocks, often 150 feet high, presenting a face of sheer ice cliffs. In the Arctic, when the temperature goes below 28 degree Fahrenheit, sea ice begins to form. Miles upon miles of sea is covered with a sheet of ice. This is also known as ice flow, which is 15 feet thick in places. All this ice is constantly on the move. There is no life on the Antarctic. Terrific winds blow off the south polar ice dome and mix with the westerly winds that flow around the world. The polar winds then either return to the pole or send storms across the South Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. Like the Antarctic's cold air, the Antarctic bottom water moves through the seas, cooling all the oceans and thus regulating the climate of the world. The Arctic is much milder and less inimical to life. It is cold enough in winter, but this cold is moderated by the presence of the sea under the ice pack. In summer, the Arctic warms up and the temperature goes up to 92 degree Fahrenheit. It is this warming up which gives life a chance in the Arctic. Vegetation like mosses, lichen and algae is seen. Many kinds of flowering plants appear. Water plants and marsh grasses take root during summer. New soil is constantly created by these plants. This takes place only at the surface level. Below is the permafrost which kills all life when winter comes. The land formation of the Arctic is different from that of the Antarctic. The Arctic is mostly flat and open. The Antarctic is spiny and mountainous. The valleys are all bare and windswept, but the mountain there is the highest, rising 12,000 feet above sea level. Friends, you are just listening to this program. We hope you have a pleasure listening to it. Project Coordination, Professor R. Meghanathan. Recorded by Bati Lang Lingdo and Mayank Kumar. Special Contribution, Vimlesh Chaudhary. Production Assistance, Kusum Lata. Edited, Directed and Produced by Ajit Horo. This program was brought to you by CIET-NCERT, New Delhi, India.